Project Submarine by Paul and Karen Will Illustrated by Del Thompson and Noel Snyder Kyle Ellis, an average kid with an above-average machine, uses current technology to unravel a security problem. Although today Kyle's computer may look strange, outdated, and useless. In the 1980s, it was the most recent in computer technology. This trend of computer improvement will even make tomorrow's computers outdate today's. Kyle Ellis punched the error button. Kyle Ellis punched the enter button. A bright blue error sign flashed at him as the computer started to beep. Oh no, Kyle slumped back in his chair. Keep trying, Mr. Jovanowitz said. Ever since your dad set up this homework checking program, you've always got your homework done in microseconds. His boisterous laugh filled the office. Kyle typed N program and pulled out the disk. Look at this, Kyle, Mr. Jovanowitz said. Mr. Jovanowitz was Mr. Ellis's partner and an earnest computer fan. He enjoyed Kyle's afternoon visits to the office. Mr. Jovanowitz started another program and a chessboard appeared. The computer has had me in check all afternoon, but I think I have a way around it. He punched two keys and his queen zipped across the screen and landed beside the computer's bishop. The computer hummed for a moment, then moved the knight forward. Checkmate flashed the screen. Ah, Mr. Jovanowitz typed onto the screen. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, he said, closing the program. Good night, Kyle said. He carefully shut down the computer. The door closed behind Mr. Jovanowitz and Kyle sighed. Computers could do more things than he had ever imagined. They seemed able to do anything, or at least almost anything. But just yesterday, Dad had said they couldn't think up an answer to the security problem at work. With the program Kyle had, he could check his math, but the computer wouldn't just give the answer straight out. Just then, the door from the laboratory opened, and a man in a white lab jacket stepped out. He set his toolbox on the office floor and held the door for a repairman. The edge of his slacks caught on the lid of the toolbox and popped it open. A disc lay on the upper shelf. Kyle could see that the other shelves were empty. He looked again. The words Project Submarine had been penciled on the label of the disc. Then he noticed the lower label. High priority. Do not remove from security area. Kyle's head spun. Dad had just mentioned the security problem at the labs. This was the leak. These men were stealing the secret information. Quickly and silently, Kyle snatched up the disc. He slid it under his chair cushion. His hands felt cold and clammy, but a drip of the sweat fell off his forehead as he pretended to adjust the computer. Hey, the man in the lab jacket said, reaching for the toolbox. What happened to the kid? Did you take the disc from my box? He leaned over Kyle, frowning and clenching his fist. Kyle grabbed the homework disc off his desk. 
Do you mean this? He asked. He tried to keep his voice steady, but he could hear it rise in his throat. Yeah, the man said. He snatched it and stuffed it in his jacket. The repairman narrowed his eyes. I don't like the looks of this, Jake, he said. A loud bell began clanging. The alarm! Jake ran for the door. The bolt shot closed. Let's get out of here, the other man said. He pulled on the handle. The door didn't budge. Come on, he said. He flung the toolbox against the window, shattering the glass. He kicked the broken pieces out of the way. Here's our ticket out, Jake. He grabbed Kyle by the arm. Kyle felt himself lifted out of the window. Then Jake tossed him into a van. He fell backward among the jumbo machines. The other man jumped into the driver's seat next to Jake. The wheels screeched as the van jerked to life and sped into traffic. As the van swayed from side to side, Kyle grabbed the seat in front of him and hung on with all his might. They sped down the highway, passing cars and trucks in a swerving roller coaster ride. A siren sounded. The driver darted in front of a car and turned into a side street, swinging the back of the van in a wide arc. The ride was a series of stops and starts, jerks and jumbles, until they reached an old warehouse. We'll hide here, the man who had driven the van. I'll call Wendell. We'll have to take what we have and go. Jake dragged Kyle into the warehouse and tied him to a pole. Then he set up a computer. The more you find out, the bigger problem you're going to be, kid, Jake said. Because what are we going to do if you find out too much? Kyle dropped his eyes to the floor. Jake laughed and hit his knee. The computer beeped. Kyle peered at it without raising his head. A game flashed onto the screen. You're really going to find out too much this way, Jake piloted his spaceship through the asteroids, flying saucers, and enemy rockets, laughing to himself as he shot them down. A car horn honked. Jake ran to the door. A mumble of unintelligible voices reached Kyle's ears. He pulled at the rope on his hands and felt it loosen. Several men walked toward him, and Kyle held still. Well, Harvey, did he say anything else? Jake asked. We'll just have to lay low for a day or two, said Harvey, the man who had driven the van. Let's check the program we got. He pulled out Kyle's homework program and stuck it into the machine. R-U-N, he typed. The disk drive hummed, and then the screen lit up with the program. What? Jake shrieked. He ripped the disk out of the computer. Look! Just look at this! Homework program. I bet that kid... His eyes turned to Kyle. Kyle's heart raced. What should I do, he thought. I've got to think. Jake shoved the disc at Kyle's face and broke it in the worthless mess. We're going to get that program, he fumed. Like you said, Harvey, here's our ticket. He tapped Kyle's chest. Let's go call the boss and arrange the details, Harvey said. 
Kyle heard them lock the door as they walked out. He pulled at the ropes. They seemed to loosen more, but his hand wouldn't fit between them and the pole. As Kyle twisted and turned, the rope caught on a nail. He tugged, and the rope popped loose. Kyle fell forward onto his knees. Wasting no time, he scrambled to his feet and raced to the door. The men had locked it from the outside. Kyle searched the windows. The lowest one was at least 20 feet from the ground. He paced the floor. If only computers could figure out a problem like this, he thought to himself. He stopped in front of the computer. The file of disks lay in a jumble. Kyle stuck one into the slot and typed R-U-N. The computer began to list names and addresses. Kyle saw his dad's company name flash by. Hmm, he murmured. Kyle stuck in another disk. Quickly, he glanced through the files and chose the ones that looked most important. He checked a few more disks, planning to find a safe place to hide them. Then he ran the program titled Warehouse. A set of floor plans covered the screen. Kyle reached for the return key. Then two words caught his attention. Emergency exit. Kyle bit his lip. If the emergency exit wasn't blocked, it would be immediately behind him. He pulled out the disc. The front door rattled. Kyle scooped up the discs and raced for the emergency exit. A big stack of empty boxes blocked his way. Kyle shoved them aside. The emergency exit sign covered with an inch of dust, lay shattered where it had fallen on the floor. Kyle attacked the door, praying that it would open. The hinges creaked and gave way. Hey, the kid's gone! Kyle tore blindly down the alley and then turned down another, expecting someone to grab him at any moment. His lungs felt as if they were bursting. The streetlights were just coming on. The shadows they made seemed to be filled with kidnappers. The streets were deserted. Kyle saw a gas station on the corner ahead. The fellow pumping gas into a car brushed his long hair out of his eyes and yawned. Kyle watched from the shadows unable to decide whether or not to trust such a character. Just then, a police car pulled into the station. Cal broke into a run. Help! he yelled. The police officer jumped out of the car. What's the problem, son? he asked. Cal stumbled as he reached him. I'm Kyle Ellis. I was kidnapped. He held his sides and gasped for air. I just escaped. Please, help me. The police officer let out a low whistle. The radio's been screaming about you and some stolen information all afternoon. Hop in. Let's get you down to the station. Dad was waiting in the chief's office when they all got to the station. Kyle, are you all right? They called me as soon as the officer radioed in that he had picked you up. Did they hurt you? They tied me to a pole in some old warehouse and tried to scare me. They sure were mad when they found out the disc they had was that homework program you wrote for me. How'd they get their hands on that? Dad looked puzzled. Kyle grinned. 
I switched the discs as soon as I realized that they had was top security. I hid the real disc under a cushion in your office. He held up the discs. And here's all of the rest of the stolen discs. I brought them with me. Dad put his arm around Kyle's shoulders. That's quite a save you made there, son. But how did you find your way out of the warehouse? Surely those men didn't leave you a map. I don't suppose they meant to, Kyle laughed. But when you've got a computer and the right disk, you can find out just about anything 